Hi, it's me again. Um, I wanted to talk to you um, a little bit about the way we're going to be approaching discussing the published short stories as well as uh, the individual exercises that you're going to be turning in starting next week to the discussion boards and then your own short stories that you'll be work working on and turning in both for small group critique and also for my own feedback. Um, the focus of our class is to understand and try to learn to utilize in various different ways the primary elements of craft and fiction. So um, I can't teach you talent, I can't teach you discipline, I can't teach you drive, but I can teach you how to use the various tools that go into making a story. Um, examples of craft tools, characterization, setting, plot, tension, dialogue, internal monologue or internal thought, um, specific detail, you know, all of these things help to create that fictive dream, that world that we enter into when we read a story or a novel. Um, now, there is not a single way of working with any of these tools. Not one right way, not one wrong way. Um, and each story requires different ways of finessing these tools. And uh, no one is going to write the same story the same way. So even if I gave you, um, go write a story about a dog, nobody would write the same story because you're bringing to the page um, what parts of that particular prompter are of value to you and then you're wielding or utilizing the tools of craft in a way that uh, works either for the story or uh, are ways that you already know how to use these tools. So uh, in this class you're going to be practicing various different um, various different approaches to using the tools and the exercises are all focused on a particular element of craft. So starting in week two you'll see um, that there's an exercise due. Uh, the exercise is due on Wednesday. There's a response due um, uh, by you for another student um, on Sunday. And that'll be your routine throughout the course. So these exercises are not complete stories. They don't have to have a beginning, middle, and end or anything like that. They are there to demonstrate a practice with that craft element. So whether the prompt is focused on characterization or on setting or on plot or on dialogue, that's what I'm going to be looking for when I look at those exercises, like how is this student actually using this tool and what ways can I, how can I help them use those tools better or in more ways? Um, it's kind of human nature to use the tools that we're comfortable with and to avoid the ones that we're not. Um, so the best place to begin is where you're the most uncomfortable. This is both in reading and in writing. So if you find yourself, you know, pulling away from different types of books, go to the library and check out a bunch of books that you would never touch and dive into them with a really open mind. Every single thing that you read will offer you a gift if you're able to listen to it and be open to it. Um, we're focusing on craft. So like this week's discussion is on the short story Cathedral. Um, what is not relevant is whether or not you liked the story. And this is a common, um, you know, kind of initial response for people. I liked it, I didn't like it. Um, and you know, it's not Facebook, so that doesn't make any difference. Um, whether you liked a piece or not does not have any effect on whether or not you can discuss the craft in it. How did Raymond Carver create that story? Like what tools was he working with? And I realize that this is probably brand new for at least half of you. So we're kind of easing into this, you know, don't be afraid. Just take these things sort of step by step. Um, in uh, Raymond Carver is, you know, kind of considered a master of detail. Um, his stories are, are slow paced. So that might not be something that you naturally gravitate toward. But it's a class, you're reading it, here we go. What did you learn from it? What did he do that was exquisite? What did he do that you don't think worked? But the most important part of that is not whether or not you thought it worked, but why you didn't think it worked, because that's going to be where you're going to be learning something new about the craft of fiction. Um, you would not write Raymond Carver's story, only Raymond Carver would write Raymond Carver's story. So, um, you know, I think this is especially true when you start to critique each other's work. Be very careful of not trying to write the story as you would like to see it. What your job is, is to dive into the work that the student already wrote and use your beginning knowledge of the craft of fiction to help them achieve their story in a, in a maybe clearer way or, um, you know, in a way that you feel might be a little more effective. But saying things, you know, like, gosh, I wish there was a flying monkey in there, that would have made the story better. That is not very helpful at all. You know, the story is what the story is. And so the things that we can talk about in ways that, um, that help keep us detached from the work itself um, are simply and only elements of craft. So on these discussion boards, you want to keep personal opinions out of it. 
Um, I don't care if you loved the Raymond Carver story. I don't care if you hated the Raymond Carver story. I want to know how you're, con you're able to have a conversation about the tools Raymond Carver used to create his short story, Cathedral. And that's the same approach that we'll use all throughout the course. All the short stories we're going to read out of the fiction gallery, the short stories you'll read in your groups, and then the exercises that you'll be um, posting beginning in week two. Um, this is actually much simpler. It keeps things much cleaner. Um, this is the way you know that we've been discussing uh, the craft of stories for, for many, 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 many years. And um, this also, believe it or not, helps it be a little bit easier uh, for you when you're the one who's putting your story out into the group, you know. Um, it may be great to hear, gosh, I loved it, because yay, that's warm and fuzzy and all that sort of stuff. But what you really want to know is um, what, what, you know, what phrase was really powerful. It was like, wow, I really, got, I really was able to be there in that room with that character, and here's exactly where it was. Or, oh my gosh, I got confused on page four. Somewhere in here, I'm actually not sure what it was that, that made me confused, but I got confused there. That's the kind of feedback that's helpful. Um, so liking, disliking, not relevant. Looking at craft components, extremely relevant. The more specific you are, even if you're not sure either how to fix something or what exactly is broken, simply pointing to a place where, and this is you know in student work, you know where the rhythm kind of goes off, or where uh, Robert Olin Butler, Robert Olin Butler, excuse me, talks about um, it being where the thrum stops. So you're going along in a story and you're just jamming with it and you're really involved with it, and suddenly you're like, bah! and something threw you out. That kind of information is valuable to the writer of that story. Um, and if you know five out of six readers get pulled out of that story in the same place, then there's something that that writer needs to go in and take a look at at that point. Um, you know, it's kind of both good and bad that you know really nobody, myself included, can tell you how to fix your story. Um, I can just point out areas where you know where I can see that you could go in different directions or where um, you know you could wield a particular craft tool stronger or in different ways. Um, but I can't tell you how to fix it because it's not my story. Um, so you really have to practice a lot of detachment. And so to that end, you know, we really want to keep, you know, personal emotions as much out of the conversation as possible. And the best way that I found to do that is to really limit the conversation to the text itself. That way, when it's your story, the talk is only about what's on the page. It's got nothing to do with anything else, preferences or not, you know. So, um, so please do keep that in mind as we start to move, um, you know, through the course. Um, I can promise you that out of all the stories we're going to read in Fiction Gallery, you are not going to like all of them. That is just the way of things. And this is a college class, and it is my job to expose you to lots of different things. Um, what I can promise you, though, is that I chose these stories on purpose, and all of them address a particular craft component that is very valuable for you to understand. Um, now, are they demonstrating the only way to work with a craft component? Absolutely not. But they, they form a springboard or a starting place for a larger discussion about a particular craft point. Um, so again, we're here to be exposed to lots and lots and lots of different things. Um, the more ways you have of working with tools, the more kinds of stories and the deeper your stories can be. So I really encourage you to not limit yourself to working with only what's comfortable. Um, there is no growth that occurs if you stay comfortable. So don't be afraid to take some risks. If you only like first-person stories and all your stories are always in first-person, well, write something in third-person and see what the heck happens. That's the only way you're going to try. It's the only way you're going to grow. Otherwise, you're setting yourself up for a whole lifetime of using only a very small fraction of the power of that tool of point of view. So, you know, that's just one example, but, you know, I've been teaching almost 20 years. They're, you know, students have... have have skills that they love and they use them over and over and over again and they neglect the rest. It's human nature. I do it too. I've had to work at, you know, I'm very good at characterization. I'm very good at working with language. I'm not so good at plotting. So I've had to spend, you know, 10, 15 years like how, like really thinking like what makes a story? How is a story compelling? What can I do differently in my work to help bring that in? Because if I rely only on what I'm strong at, I'm never going to be as good as I, as I can be. And I want that for you. I want you to be as good as you can be. And in order to do that, you have to be willing to try things that don't, that aren't comfortable, that aren't familiar, and that really, you know, kind of push you out of, you know, where you might feel comfortable. Um, so we're off to a really good start. Um, our first post in Cathedral very much addresses just the craft elements of that story. Um, that's exactly what I'm looking for. Um, and I look forward to seeing what you do next. Uh, keep this in mind as we move into week two with our own exercises on the board, and we'll start hitting some other stories, you know, later on in the semester. Same rules apply. 
craft discussion only, personal opinion, like dislike of a piece, absolutely not relevant. So um, that's all for this broadcast of me. I hope that you enjoyed it. Um, thanks for your work so far, and I look forward to seeing what happens next. Take care.